Now that the car has Mega Squirt installed and a basic tune running, uh, there's no longer any need for this airbox. So we're going to take all this stuff out and replace it with a um, pod filter. So this is the um, two and three quarter tube that I got, which is it's a, just an aluminum tube that matches up. This is the size, two and three quarters is the size of the crossover tube here. And with we've got all these all this room once the air box is removed, there's just about three bolts holding it in, and you can take the you don't even need to take the top off if you don't want to. Um, I did because my um, air intake sensor was just chilling in there. So I needed to get that back out, but um, once we do this, we're gonna kind of measure this out. I don't want to put too much stress on this little bendy thing because that can actually crack. It's it's pretty flexible right now, which is decent for being 24 years old. But uh, I don't want to take too many risks. So you can see this points basically like that. Um, so it's it's kind of pointing almost straight back but not quite so just a little bit of an angle so what we're gonna do is just cut this to be as um, deep in here as possible like it's gonna come out right right before the curve and then um, we'll cut this one out to be kind of as short as possible now that the air filter itself has a little bit of a curve to it as, as well I got this particular one and so it will continue the curve around and or down to kind of fit into this general area right here. So this mark is how deep it needs to be this this far into the uh, crossover tube. So we're going to leave this much after the curve so that it can fit. And then this mark is how deep it is at its deepest section on the filter side. It does not need to be this deep. It can be like half this deep. So we're basically going to start with cutting it like right about here and then seeing how that works and then if we need to cut it back we can we can take another little bit off so we can see how that goes and marked it right about here um, wrapped it with tape to uh, the tape is like exactly the same width as this amount of distance um, and the tape is just to help guide me uh, make a clean straight cut all right that's on there pretty good um, have to check for leaks and everything, um, but yeah, that fits pretty well. Now I've got to cut the other side, and the filter should go on kind of right about there. Alrighty, not too bad. Um, so it fits it's right at the level of the inside of the hood but what happens is it goes into this little this little area right here um, kind of fits right in there as it goes down and might need a bracket so this doesn't wiggle around but maybe like right here is a little bit lower Supposed to cranked in. Either way, it seems fine. So, just had to move this this cable a little bit. You want to make sure that you don't have anything in the way of the uh, light mechanism. So, this rotates right here. So, if this is somewhere non-standard, like I think it normally sits right here, actually. So it kind of goes around behind power steering, power steering, and the little actuator for manual actuator for the uh, um, light housing. So the last part is to take our our air intake sensor cannot be sitting here in the engine bay, so we're going to need to drill a hole and tap it right about here. Now. This is not ideal location because of heat soak that's gonna arrive from the exhaust manifold, of course, but uh, we will be, I'm gonna shield it for now, and then um, we're gonna be building a little uh, heat shield 
for the exhaust, or maybe it actually an air box for this whole area. Um, that'll include like this this back portion, like all this in here, and uh, hopefully that'll shield not only the air intake sensor but the uh, the air temps as well. All right, so I tapped it. Uh, initially, you want to drill it with a 9 16 uh, bit. I use this step bit because um, that's like super fast for drilling through um, light metals, uh, making holes. Um, it's a lot faster than, than doing the, um, and you get a lot cleaner hole than using a regular bit. And then my 5 8 uh, 3 8 by 18 thread uh, NPT tap, which I got from Harbor Freight. And um, in a pinch, if you don't have a square socket or a square uh, tap tool, then you can use a 5 8 wrench and, um, or socket. And you can see there's just barely a little bit of wiggle room. It works fine. All right, let's see what it looks like. Here's what I've got. Um, ended up not inserting it too far. And basically, this, the crossover tube is in the identical position. And then just made a, a little 90 out of this. And I've got a couple extra pieces now that I can use for something else. Tapped it right here to be sort of shielded from the exhaust. And what I'm gonna do is build another, either shield around this and make a box or a shield for the exhaust manifold. I'll get to that. Um, and then this one, you can see how it's got an angle to it um, built in, so it's angled that way. So the, the bottom part of the angle, the interior part of the angle is this little line right here. So this should all work. I'll clean up this cabling later, get some harness uh, loom wrap, just like this, make it look stock, and we should be all set. Need to my wide band was previously zip tied to the um, old air box, um, the intake tube. So I need to secure that. But other than that, it looks like it's okay. So we'll give it a shot. All right. I think it sounds a little, uh, a little deeper actually. So that's nice. Sounds mean. Let's give it a rev. So it's running super rich right now, super rich. So uh, definitely needs a tune. I tuned it a little bit uh, yesterday um, and it wasn't this rich, but I guess it's getting more air. I guess it is a bit restrictive, um, the old air box. So uh, we'll have to redo that, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's idling pretty well. Drop it, idles are dropping down. This is the first start for the day. It was up at 1100, now it's dropping down to about 900, 950, somewhere in there. So, looking okay. All right. That's about the easiest DIY intake I think you can do. Um, it's pretty pretty much as simple as possible, 190. Enjoy. So the last step was to uh, create an air box. And um, sorry I didn't get a lot of this filmed uh, because I just started making a template and I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do exactly. And then by the time I thought to pick up the camera, I was pretty much done because this was like super easy. Um, all I did was, uh, I use some of this, I like to use this as a templating material. It's basically like a poster board, you know, kind of a cardstock thickness. It's easier to work with than cardboard. And, uh, um, so what I did was, you know, just kind of, it's a little piece of rubber. This is, this makes a, would make a bet for a better seal. 
uh, this type of thing on here, but I didn't have any more of this, just this little strip. So I just brought this out so you could see kind of what the plan is going forward is I'm gonna make a, a better um, seal for it at the top because it doesn't really meet up terribly well with the hood. Um, so there is some gaps there, uh, but plan to kind of fix that. But anyway, created a little template, you know, cut it out to the right size so that it would go in here. Um, created another little piece of cardboard right here. And it kind of, it's hard to see in there, but it, it slopes in on the inside. So there's like a little um, slope to it, which matches up with the shelf down here. And so this just goes across. And all I did was, um, I had some metal lying around. It was, I wanna say 16 gauge mild steel. Uh, plate and um, or just sheet metal the 16 gauge is a little thin to be called plate but I think that's maybe what they they call it uh, and I picked it up at a hardware store and I just had some of that extra material laying around so I decided to do that and uh, and because mild steel is going to rust um, you're going to want to paint it or do something like what I did which was I got some of this Reflectix tape uh, it's just silver tape. You can also get it at the hardware store. And it's basically like real duct tape. Like originally what duct tape was for was to wrap around ducts and to, um, you know, cause it to reflect heat off of your uh, ducting work uh, that's that's like in a house or a building or something like that. So anyway, you can pick this up for about three bucks a roll. And I just put this on the outside to provide a little reflectivity because, of course, the exhaust headers are right there. On the inside, it doesn't matter, so I just spray painted it black. And what I did was um, the pieces, so because of the slant at the bottom, I basically made this and this as one piece and bent it, and then just sort of tacked, tack welded this onto this. So I put a couple tacks down in here, and um, I'm not a welder by any means, but this is why I used good old Harbor Freight 125 amp welder that I picked up for 80 bucks. So I've done a couple little small projects with this welder and it works fine. I'm still on the original wire that it came with, which is pretty crappy, but uh, you can get better wire and that makes it work a little bit better. But, uh, you know, for little things like this, so just tacking, you know, thin metal, it works fine. And, um, uh, Actually, it's a little, sometimes it could be challenging to work with that welder on very thin metal. So this was just barely kind of okay because it likes to burn through it. But basically, if you just use little spot welds, it'll, you can, you can do sheet metal with that welder. So anyway, I just tacked that in, painted it up so that it would look a little nicer, and then uh, made the little air box. So when the hood is closed, most of the air volume is actually coming from basically right here and so the reason for this plate right here is to also block the hot radiator air that's being blown you know by the fans or just air movement in general so you don't want that air you don't want you don't want this air you want this air you want air to be sucked in from kind of the side of the hood and right around the the light fixture so there's air coming in basically right here that it can pull from and um, it's blocked off on the bottom, so it won't pull in from the bottom, which is also hot air, and the hot air is wanting to rise up there. So this is this is sealed down here on the bottom. So little air box, no big deal. All right, that basically completes the uh, MAF delete. I also removed. Uh, there's a little bracket in there. So basically what all was removed is all this. This is the uh, little snorkel for the, there's the air box itself. Um, this little bracket was sitting in there. Some miscellaneous nuts and bolts, which if possible, I put the nut, the bolts back in their holes so that they could be used. And uh, you know, for some other thing, actually, now that I think about it, there's one other thing. At the bottom here, 
is a little bracket that holds it in. I was thinking about adding one on the back, but honestly, this is pretty, this is reasonably solid. It, it really doesn't vibrate around much at all. And um, there's plenty of room up here for these wires, this wire harness to go back here. So it really, does, this, this is held in pretty securely. Um, but what I did was made a little tab and that actually, I just riveted on. Um, cause <laughs> I had forgotten to do the tab and I had already put the tape on and everything like that. Didn't want to peel it apart. So I just riveted that little tab on, uh, just a couple of little small rivets and, uh, put that bolt back in there. That's the original bolt from the airbox, And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's on there pretty good. So that's it. Weight reduction plus I didn't weigh these. Maybe I should weigh these. I'll put that up in the link. Uh, put that as a uh, description item. I'll try to weigh these for you so you know how much the airbox is. But uh, now that you got your mega squirt, you don't need all that. It did produce. I, I I don't know. I could notice a change in the peppiness of the car just a little bit. But the butt dyno uh, seems to be telling me that uh, it gained a little bit. So maybe like five horsepower, something like that. So, um, anyway, um, this filter is definitely way more surface area than the previous panel filter. This should be enough to even flow for the small turbo that I plan to put in here. This should be actually big enough for that. I've done some of the calculations and I think the airflow should be good up to maybe 180 horsepower. If I get above 180, uh, I may have to get a little bit bigger one, but, um, it should work. So anyway, that'll be relatively stable for a while. Now the turbo may have a problem fitting with the way this air box is. It kind of, this corner sticks out, but anyway, that's for a future video. Okay. Leave a comment below. If you think it looks good, let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.